All right, welcome back, everybody. Got an exciting one for you today. I just recently released the Greeble Pack Pro 1.5 for ZBrush 4R8. It has been released to the wild uh, for everybody to play with, so all of you that have already purchased it, definitely uh, you should have received an email from me, and I know a few of you have already installed it and are up and generating. Um, unfortunately, I did not have any tutorials up and ready for this when I released it. I, uh, I should have thought of that when I did it, but I wanted to push it out. I was tired of sitting on it for so long so sorry about that so I'm gonna do this quick tutorial today on installation as well as uh, generating uh, some uh, textures as well as these cool 3d models that the new macros can do for you so let's uh, briefly go over um, the pack and let's talk about what's new um, real quick uh, this release will not work in ZBrush 4R7 Unfortunately, nothing you create in 4R8 will work inside 4R7. But if you got 4R7, why haven't you upgraded? So many cool new features that I've been loving the heck out of. And that's why this uh, pack is late, uh, because they released 4R8 and slowed me down. So moving on there, let's go ahead and do a quick uh, review of what's new in here. Uh, if we come into, you'll see our macro panel here, you'll see that we have a new Greeble 3D, which uh, can generate a cylinder or a panel like uh, these two guys down here from this one texture. And uh, it makes some uh, pretty accurate models. Uh, only thing is that it, when it generates it, they gen come out to about 7 to 15 million polygons, so I would definitely decimate it afterwards and be sure you process it with UVs, and I'll go over that here in just a minute. Um, also, uh, there's some new uh, map um, ones up in here. They're combinations of all maps plus uh, every, all the 3D models or just the cylinder or just the panel. Uh, that's so it's just quick and easy. You could do all, all maps and all 3D and it'll generate everything for you. Uh, it does take probably about, I think, uh, I didn't have it really timed it, but I, I'm about 10 to 15 minutes just for one of these, but it is generating eight 4K textures for you along with two models with, uh, you know, with the really nice UVs. That means that you can use all of the the maps that you have, like the diffuse, the material ID, the normal, the opacity, the shaded. All those will work on these models because the way that I have the UV set up for them. So uh, also the ambient occlusion maps, as I've been, I modified that one, so uh, it gives a little better result. So. Uh, the new AO is built into this panel up here. Uh, if you still like the older AO, you can certainly go down here and just click that and it will generate the old one for you. So moving on, um, we'll quickly go over this. I actually did a better job going over the new uh, Greeble Single and Greeble Multi uh, in my little What's New package than I did with the 3D. So basically, the I'll give you just the gist of it. It's basically to customize your own Greeble so you have a lot more control. So all you have to do is go to the Nano Mesh, click Edit Mesh on uh, the Greeble Single and you'll get this plane here and if everything is squared off in uh, the Greeble Generator so it's a 4K resolution. So basically everything that you place on this grid that's exactly where it's going to show up on the Greeble single. So if you notice down here, I have it overlapping over here, overlapping under here. And then when I come out of edit, you can see it has it has uh, wrapped it to the other side. So it's tileable. So you can make a huge wall with all the same pattern going across it. So that's the idea behind Greeble single. And moving on, the Greeble Multi is basically like all the other tools, all the other Greebles inside the generator. Uh, you basically, you do the same setup here. It'll have a, a grid just like this that you could put your whatever you want on there using uh, IMM brushes. And you just uh, 
put it on there and then when you when you send it back out it comes up with this all randomly generated then you can just click random seed and move it all about you know so what how, how did i put it here a little tiled chaos goes a long way and that's what it does so you can see the Grubel single and the Grubel multi combined together here makes something pretty cool but don't forget to add some of the other uh Grubels that are already in there all the older ones that i've that I had built in there from the previous versions, you know, with a, you can put a grid behind there or you can add some more pipes in the background. So, you know, you got a whole lot more possibilities. Now, I also shipped along a new Griebel brush that has uh, over a hundred plus models in there uh, that I will be going over in the next video. But basically that'll help you come up here to the grid and just start slapping on there with a IMM brush and that's what that Griebel brush is designed for and like I said I'll have a full tutorial just about that so we're going to concentrate on installation and set and start and doing a Griebel 3D real quick so let us see what else I want to talk about here uh, just on a side note just wanted to jump over to a couple pages on Zebra Central which I thought was kind of cool I uh, wanted to check out a couple of these artists that are using Griebels in their uh, work and have showcased them just recently. Uh, this is a relatively new one just a few days ago and he added a lot of Griebels to the Under Armour and stuff like that. It turned out really, really great. Uh, kind of combining that biomechanical look there with the, and then you got the Griebels here and there underneath all the little webbing. Uh, it's, it's just really awesome little setup there. And then scrolling down, he just uh, did this one just a couple hours ago. Uh, some alien astronaut with a mask and all that. I mean, that turned out really cool just using all the, the greebles there. It really turned out really great. So another one here that just came out today. Uh, basically took some simple uh, spaceship designs and slapped... Uh, uh, agreeable texture on there the depth map on there and generated these awesome little ships here super fast just well done guys and I really appreciate your support so uh, let's go ahead and start with the installation if uh, you take a look at what came uh, with the update here uh, you'll notice uh, some things haven't changed uh, like I still got the sample objects still from October 2016 uh, we didn't have the new Griebel brush, 4R8, Griebel generator, 4K, 4R8. Uh, I just want to pound it in your guys' head that this is for 4R8, not 4R7. So most of these things will not function inside 4R7. Sorry, guys, but go get the upgrade. You're missing out. Uh, actually, I actually doubled this uh, plug data. It's actually in the Z scripts as well. So, And then I got a little installation here. So let's jump into uh, my computer system here, and you can see how I have it set up. Uh, right now, I'm in Program Files, Pixel Logic, so ZBrush 4 or 8. And let's go, you want to go down to Startup. And if you look for your, uh, even in the Mac, as long as you find Pixel Logic, Z ZBrush 4 or 8, and Startup, you can still follow along. I'm using a PC. Sorry, Mac guys, sorry but uh, it, it still works the same way and that's why the macros and everything works on both PC and Mac. So we're in the startup here. We go to our, you first want to install that Griebel plug data, which is gonna be, you wanna put him in the Z plugs. And then here's the Griebel plug data. Open him up, and when you first got it, you should have had just this Griebel 3D in here, okay? This folder will fill up with more uh, 3D objects as well as uh, textures, so everything will exist inside this folder here. So if you ever want to go find something, and what I've done, I've actually made a shortcut over here for Griebel plug data so I could just click it and it takes me straight to this folder so I would definitely do that because it'd be quick and easy for you to just copy all your textures and dump it into a folder you want or uh, it'll actually generate uh, the the panel as well as the cylinder inside this folder it'll save a backup copy inside of here so this is something to remember so Griebel plug data and we'll actually need to go find it when we generate the 3D objects, and I'll show you why here in a minute. So let's backtrack out, get back to the startup,
go to your macros and here are all the folders that I sent sent you in the Z scripts folder okay so all you need is the Greeble, Greeble 3D, Greeble Color, Greeble Old Maps, and Greeble Rotation. So you open up each one. It should have just text files in there, but because I have ZBrush open, it generated Z scripts. So that will happen. Uh, these uh, Z scripts are editable. I really wouldn't mess with them unless you have a really good working knowledge of Z scripts. I'm amateurish. I'm real amateur at it, so it's 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 a miracle that I've gotten all this stuff to work. So I've had a few help uh, from uh, I've had a little help from uh, one of the guys at Pixel Logic to help me get some of the stuff going. So definitely prop kudos to him. Uh, let's see, but uh, that's basically it for how to set up. Uh, the generator itself can go into whatever folder you want. You can put it on your desktop; it don't matter. So, okay, that's about it for the setup. So let's jump in. All right, I already got the Greeble generator, 4K color, 1.5, 4R8. Wow, that's a mouthful, sorry guys. But that is the file we are using today. You can see it right up here. And that's what you should have seen when you first booted up. So I'm gonna make some, I'm not gonna really do any uh, fancy uh, Greeble in here. I'm just gonna make a few quick modifications to kind of show off our, uh, 3d panel a little bit better uh, go under nano mesh and I'm on the upper panels here you can I could do a quick random seed and see if I come up with something a little different I don't know we'll see that's the cool and irritating thing with a uh, random seed you can sit here and watch it for hours and see something you like and accidentally move the mouse and you can't find it again so yeah and I think I'm back to where I started. Okay, I'm just going to go with that. So I'm going to do, I'm going to go to Subtool. I'm going to turn off Miscellaneous, get rid of these little piano key things here. Because I want to open it up. There we go. I want to be able to see back into the voids here. This is really what's going to make your, uh, your 3D panels and everything pop. So go to your macros. Okay, if you uh, don't have it set up like I do, uh, you can actually go get my UI. Uh, it's available on Gumroad. But basically, you just take the macro here and you click, drag, and drop it over here. And there you go. And then open it up. Uh, ignore the little miscellaneous there. That's a Pixelogic folder there. I just never got rid of it. I don't, I don't know what it's for. I've never even tried them. But and so here's all the macros I showed you image of earlier. I'm going to do a quick uh, rundown. These are pretty self-explanatory up here. All maps plus panel, cylinder, or all 3D. Uh, that's how that, these are pretty self-explanatory. But the cylinder, what the cylinder, if you just click just cylinder, it all it's going to end up creating is a, a shaded texture, a depth map, and the cylinder. And that's all it will render. It's not going to try to make all the other maps like diffuse material ID normal. So this is one of the quicker ways to do it. Or you could do cylinder last render. It will look at everything in that Greeble plug data folder and just pull from there to generate everything. And same thing with the panel. The panel will just render off the two different textures and then start on the 3D process. Panel last render won't even do any uh, render process. It will just uh, pull from the Greeble plug data folder and start generating whatever was in there. So that's how those work. I, I find the best one that works really well is all maps, all 3D. It's going to end up being the quickest process, you know, instead of doing just all maps and then come down and do cylinder and then do panel so it's just best to just do all maps and all 3d and that's what the one i'm going to show off today so uh before i start this off i wanted to recommend to you to make sure you've got at least 16 gigabytes of ram when you're doing any 3d operations okay uh it's uh it's doing a lot of high process in there you're talking about storing morph targets creating differences as well as uh some high poly dynamission so yeah let's uh make sure you got at least 16 gigs as you can see i'm only sitting at eight gigs right now and i've got a 16 gig machine so 
those uh, lower end laptops, you might struggle a bit with this. I would test it out. You know, the cylinder is the most taxing because it creates the most geometry. So out of uh, the panel and the cylinder. So it's almost double the panel. So let's go ahead and we'll get started here. I'm going to open up the texture panel so I can just sit here and kind of watch it generate all the textures. It gives me something to do while I sit here and watch it percolate. So I'm going to go ahead and get the texture and started and I will pause it until it asks us a question before it starts generating the, the 3D. And then I will unpause it and I'll tell you what's going on, okay? So here we go. Okay, we are back. As you can see over here in your texture panel, everything has been generated already. And now we have moved on to the 3D part of this. And what, uh, what is happening here, noise maker or surface noise, has opened up a dialogue for you. And it's asking you to find uh, load 3D depth in your Gribble plug data folder. Okay, simple enough, right? So let's go ahead, click on the alpha. It basically it turns it off and then turn it back on. And let's uh, use that little shortcut that I had, bam. We open it up and this is what's inside our folder now. This is all the textures that was generated. Let's see, get extra large here so you can see. And it also generated uh, two additional textures. Just uh, keep the naming conventions uh, separate. Uh, you have now have the 3D depth is what surface noise is looking for. And then you have 3D texture. And that's the texture it's going to apply to it at the end of the process. So click on 3D depth, open. And the reason we have to do this is, unfortunately, Zscripts cannot work with surface noise. Uh, the, be the most I could do was load up a previously made file, which uh, is called Greeble 3D, and then we saw that over in the Greeble plug data, but I cannot manipulate it. These are the settings that I set prior to that, and the only thing is I could not set the, the depth or the, the alpha. I could not, uh, you, can't, you can't do a Z script. It, it will not work with this because basically it's a Z script telling another Z script something to do. ZBrush just says no. Okay, so the best we can do is open up the dialog and you have to do a little manual search in there. But as you can see, it wasn't hard. So we're going to click OK and the Z script should continue. As you can see, it is already continued and it's continuing on with the process. The first one on the all maps and all 3D will be the, the panel. It is actually, even when you do a cylinder, it'll create a panel first. Uh, because all of the cylinder is, 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 the, is the panel deformed and then mirrored to the opposite side. So that's why you get kind of the mirrored effect, which you'll see at the end of this here. So I am going to pause this and let this continue, and, and I will pick up with you at the end of the 3D process. All righty. It has finished the process there. As you can see, it kind of looks like our Greeble generator, right? Well, uh, this little note will pop up, and you'll know that the process is done. Maps and models generated. Go to the texture panel to export your maps out. I'll show you another way to do that. And then, always, thanks for your purchase. I do appreciate all of you. So, go ahead and hit Escape. And let's take a look at what we got here. I'm going to actually zoom in, do the AA half, so it's not such a big process for the computer, and frame it. And if we take a look, we now have a 3D panel from our Greeble generator. How cool is that? So go ahead and if you go down here, we have the cylinder. Same thing. As you can see, you can see all the bumps and extrusions on the inside and the outside. The only thing with this one here, it's not a perfect seam on the side. As you can see here, let me uh, frame them up, and you're going to get a random 
uh, things going on over here. But be honest, I I, I kind of like it. Yeah, I think it's kind of cool. But that is basically it. Now, as you can see, this particular model is the cylinder is like 12.3 million. And I've had them go all the way up to about 15 on 16 million especially on the cylinders it just depends on how much complexity you have in here so that's just something that you need to remember uh, these guys the the panels usually about five to seven million just depends on complexity but so let's go ahead and let's go to our texture not our texture let's plugins and we're going to do decimation master and we're going to shave off some of these polygons here okay always remember keep uvs if you don't keep uvs it's not going to keep that map okay so pre-process current and we're going to give it a minute to percolate here i'll come back when it's done okay all right we are done pre-processing and I'm going to start off with a safe number here, about 100,000 polygons, and we'll see what we come up with. So decimate current. We'll keep an eye on it and see if our texture floats anywhere. Really, it did not. I didn't see much of anything except maybe down these cracks a little bit, but I think I'll be okay there. And if you hit polyfill, uh, you can see how it's decimated the model. And so it's cleaned up these uh, large panels really beautifully. And then let's zoom in a little bit here. You can see it's held on to quite a bit of the detail down low. So uh, I think 100,000 is going to work for me on this one. So yeah, we're not designing game asset models here. Okay. But what we are designing is we're designing uh, some low weight panels that we can use in our nice beautiful renders in Keyshot or other programs uh, Max and Maya you know so because they're going to appreciate having the lower polygons so let's see another cool thing about the way this thing is the way the UVs are set up you can go into textures and if I click on a new texture I could pick from all the ones that I already have. So let's get material ID. Wow, okay. See, so now I could take this into Substance Painter and I can use this at this material ID channel and these pink, these purple pink ones here, we can make into, uh, I don't know, a steel and, you know, just do so many other things. You've seen me do it before and it's very cool so let's go ahead and we'll go back to shaded and let's go to our cylinder here we're going to do the same thing we're going to start pre-processing with uvs on pre-process and give me just a second here and we'll be right back all right we're done pre-processing and good rule here whatever you did uh, poly count wise uh, for the panel double it for the cylinder because there's in sense double the information there and we have to account for the curvature of the cylinder so let's see if 200,000 polygons will be okay for this so decimate current and really I did not see much of anything some of the small stuff there shifted just a little bit but all in all, I think it did a good job. As you see, it's laid out very well, and I'm pretty happy with that. You know, like I said before, we are not making game ready assets, okay? But we're making good, cool, quick cinematic assets for any of your animations or just a cool digital background. This would be pretty cool. So let's do the same trick with this one. Let's slap the material ID on there or well, let's put the normal on there why not as you can see there's the normal it lays perfectly over the whole object and the only re and the reason that this works like that if you go into come back to the panel itself uh, when the reason it creates the panel first is because when it generates this it does a planner projection UV projection
So this way, it, since it's perfectly square, it will it'll map the UVs perfectly. The only uh, oddity that you'll have is like on the sides here, you'll notice some stretching and of the texture. Let's see. It's, Kind of hard to see in this one. This one actually did a really good job here. Uh, you'll notice that from time to time, you'll see some, you know, like here it kind of gets a little wavy and that's just because of the way it uh, decimated the model. But lots of times you're not, not even really gonna see the sides. You know, maybe the piping in here might look a little odd sometimes. But all in all, I mean, it's a, it's a great little technique. So let's let's play with this guy just a little bit more. Let me zoom him out, throw in array mesh, array mesh, do uh, repeat three, and go to your X prof or your X amount, so left and right here, and just type in three. Boom. So now you have a tileable 3D object. Now that's, that's kind of cool, along with your tileable 3D textures. And I mean, it's it's really seamless. Unless you look really close, you'll see that faint line. And sometimes if I actually do uh, the X amount and take off a fraction of a point here, so do 2.99, enter. See, it kind of overcompensated there. So let's do 2.99, see. Uh, it won't let me do that. So we'll just go back to three. Sometimes that works. Sometimes I don't. But from a distance, man, you'll never even notice that. How cool is that? So that's basically it. Let me show you uh, real fast where uh, everything's hiding at now. So let's go back to our agreeable plug data. And there is everything we just generated. So it's got uh, the odd 3D depth, 3D textures, and that's for the agreeable 3D. So these three go together here. And then you have your regular AO, curve, depth, and all the maps that you're familiar with. And then, it, like I said, it made a backup copy of the cylinder and a backup copy of the panel. Uh, the high poly versions, uh, as well as the 3D texture slapped onto it. So, uh, but if you ever worry that, oh man, I forgot to save everything out of the texture panel, uh, you can just hop in here, grab everything, dump it into a folder and then as long as you keep that Greeble 3D in here this guy here and get rid of everything else and move them out of here it'll still work the macro will work just fine so that is basically it for this uh, going over the installation and the Greeble 3D I hope you enjoyed the new feature I was really excited to get it out for you there uh, right now I don't have any thoughts on how to generate any other type <laughs> of geometry for you um, wanted to try to do a sphere but couldn't get the deformations to work right because a lot of this a lot of the cylinder was created inside deformation using uh, I believe s bend and a bunch of transforms and rotates and you can actually go and look at the Z script and see what it's doing so you can play with that all you want. Just make sure you make a backup copy so you, you don't uh, jack up the original. So that is it today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the new features. Like I said, I will have another one out here in several days going over the Greeble Single, Greeble Multi, and the Greeble Brush. We'll go all over that. We'll, we'll make our own customizable Greeble. Uh, we'll make this, you know, basically your own Greeble generator something that no one else has so it's going to be all you guys so definitely hit a like definitely give a comment definitely subscribe and i appreciate every one of you and we will see you in the next video